For this uh, demo, the test signal is a square wave of about uh, 10 megahertz. Uh, pressing the output button on the function generator couples the test signal to the frequency counter by way of this uh, 50 ohm coax. At this point we are ready to measure or count the actual frequency of the, of the test signal. Pressing this button will do two things. It will schedule the measurement and also clear the binary counter chip. Set it. You'll need to set it down because the light... Oh, sorry. The measurement is uh, complete, um, and uh, at this point, um, the LCD displays the actual count in in hertz, which is uh, ten million and twenty-three point two five hertz. The other numbers and um, the the, uh, the the binary remainder and so on are explained in the write-up that accompanies this demo. At this point I want to change the frequency in the function generator. So we'll go back over here, I'll switch the output off, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to do a low frequency very low frequency ten kilohertz instead of ten megahertz we are going to uh, measure what the function generator calls ten kilohertz I'll switch on the output coming back to the frequency counter this LED here is indicating the four seconds on and four seconds off from the GPS. Um, the measurement is made during the on phase, so I can um, reset the I can reset the, the counter at any time and schedule a measurement. I'll do that now. Now a measurement is enabled, and as soon as the on phase starts, you'll notice the LEDs blinking. Well, in, in point of fact, they were blinking the last time also, but much too fast for the eye to see. And here we have a measure, measurement, uh, an actual value of 10,000.25 hertz. So the uh, actual current agrees with the function generator to the nearest hertz, the nearest one hertz or one cycle. And that's uh, basically what we expect. So the red LED isn't on this time because there's not 512. Yeah, that's right. These All of these LEDs are indicating bits on the binary counter, this being the most significant bit and this the least significant. So here we have the 64-bit and the 1-bit, which makes 65. Um, <clears throat> really, uh, it was an accident. I, I, I put one too few LEDs on and then I had to add another one. So that's why it came out like that. Now I want to go to the other extreme, so to speak, and show um, a, a high frequent, a very high frequency kind. The problem is that the uh, function gener generator only goes to 25 megahertz. And for this uh, demo, I'll generate a signal at 40 megahertz. So <clears throat> we'll take the coax off this coax off the uh, the board and um, although it's not necessary I'm just going to power off and uh, I'm going to connect an SI5351 clock generator to the input of the frequency counter and plug it in to a little auxiliary jack especially for the purpose here and um, 
the program, the sketch in the uh, microprogramming unit here, the sketch includes generating a test frequency of 40 megahertz in the SI5351 provided there's an SI5351 plugged in. Now, just as with the function generator, the frequency is not exact and in fact it, it will be somewhat more off. This is cold, plugged in cold, and it's uh, its accuracy depends on the 25 megahertz clock, uh, crystal clock on the on the board. So you switch things back on again, and on switching them on, um, the MPU has already programmed this chip to generate 40 megahertz, which it is doing at the moment. And so all we have to do is schedule uh, schedule a measurement and zero the counter. It is not measuring, and as you see, the actual frequency is thirty nine thirty nine point nine 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 three six seven two five megahertz. So it's approximately six hundred and thirty three megahertz. I mean, excuse me, six hundred and thirty three hertz below the forty megahertz uh, that we attempted to generate but very very close I mean the, in, in percentage that's a very close value but this is the actual count uh, based upon the accuracy of the one pulse per second signal from the GPS